The transport and logistics space in India is on fire right now. We've got tech-led players changing how stuff moves from A to B, both literally and figuratively. Welcome to Bottom Line by Grow. Today, we're zooming in on two companies that are shaping up our transport services with smart tech and serious scale. But before we really look at those companies, let's take a look at the Indian logistics industry, the real foundation on which these companies operate on. Now, our logistics network is the quiet engine behind the economy. They're moving goods across massive and diverse landscape every single day. And as our country chases that bold GDP target of 5.5 trillion by 2027, fixing the logistics industry isn't optional. It's entirely mission critical. Now, there are a few key growth drivers in the logistics industry. Now, we've got big pushes. We're talking about the Bharat Mala Pariyojana. We have dedicated freight corridors. We've got the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti. We've got e-way bills and the National Logistics Policy 2022. And all these are really greasing the wheels for smoother and faster movement. Pun intended. And the structure of this logistics market can be classified based on the kind of service that you're really offering or the type of logistics services that you're offering. When it comes to the services front, I'd like you to think about rail, road, air, and really the warehousing that is stitched across all of these to enable them. And in the logistics market, we have point solutions like 1PL, where companies manage their own logistics. You have 2PL, where specific tasks, such as loading or delivery, are outsourced. You know, they handle the smaller parts of the chain. You have supply chain solutions that go even deeper. You've got 3PL, where you have providers managing transportation, warehousing, and services all together. While you have 4PL, which uses technology to coordinate the entire supply chain. But at the very top, you have integrated logistic blends, 3PL and 4PL, with added value services to make operations seamless and also efficient. We're talking full stack logistics, not patchwork. Now, India has the second largest road network on this planet, and trucks are the workhorses. They're carrying roughly two thirds of all freight, with rail carrying about a third, and the rest being handled by shipping and air. Trucks move India, period. Now, there are an estimated 12.5 million trucks rolling last year in 2024, with heavy and medium vehicles forming a big chunk of that entire fleet. India's trucking market is massive. It's about 170 to 175 billion dollars. It's growing by eight to nine-ish percent annually, but it's super fragmented. Nearly three quarters of the trucks are owned by small independent operators. And that fragmentation means that a lot of idle days where trucks aren't just making money. You have time lost either hunting for load or for unloading or just waiting. And empty miles mean empty pockets. Now, meanwhile, you've got a bunch of startups, techie folk, who are digitizing this chaos. There are roughly a thousand logistic players, still fragmented, but the tech tide is rising fast. Now, these are new age companies and these are leveraging technologies like telematics. And telematics is the real time driver tracking, driver behavior monitoring, and smarter fleet routing, you know, to save time, save fuel, and also money. You also have digital platforms. Now, these are online freight marketplaces that are connecting shippers, people who want to send stuff, and truckers with instant booking payments and tracking. And the adoption is scaling across the board. But all is not chill, and we still have challenges in this industry. It's a rough game. You've got fragmented players, you've got regulatory complexity, and the tax layers make this whole thing messy. And last mile, that's a beast. You've got traffic, patchy roads, fuzzy addresses, and these are slowing things down both in cities and in the rural areas. And you add to that a talent gap. Skilled logistic pros are seriously in short supply. Fragmented today, but can they be unified tomorrow? This is the time to deep dive into the companies which are revolutionizing this space. And the first company we are going to be talking about is Black Buck Limited. Now, you walk into any transport hub and you'll feel it. The old way is creaking, but change is inevitable. And the only questions are when and what is going to trigger that change. Right now, Indian trucks are billable for only about 17 to 18 days a month. It's far less than the number that we see in developed markets where they tend to run more days and also cover 
longer distances as a part of their operations. And that's inefficiency that's waiting to be fixed. And that's exactly what Blackbuck is going after. Fewer weights, more miles. Now, Blackbuck is India's largest digital trucking platform. Think of them as a matchmaker for loads and trucks. You have a shipper that wants to move stuff across, the app finds a truck, and if you have a trucker that needs the next load, the app gives it to them, it delivers it faster. And the result is that shippers are able to move cheaper and quicker, and truckers are able to move more and earn more. Win-win situation. And it's not really just matchmaking. There's a toolkit that's built around it. They've got payments where they're offering fuel cards instead of cash. They integrate fast tag for tolls effectively building in less friction and more uptime. There's also telematics, which is live tracking. So they're offering better routing, fewer delays, and more efficiency. And there's also financing. They're giving access to credit for buying or even upgrading the trucks. And this is really growth fuel for operators. You're moving from load to livelihood now. And all this is built on an asset light model. There's no truck ownership, by the way. It's just tech that is scaling across a nationwide network of shippers, people who want to send stuff, and truckers, people who want to move the stuff. They're also building something called super loads, which is specialized in heavy cargo moves. And now they're scaling in select cities as well, and they've got really strong early traction. Now, how is Blackbuck making money amidst all these operations? And commission income is really fees from their partners for distribution and management of the services that they deliver to their operators you also have subscription fees. Now, this is recurring access to premium features that is available on their platform. And you have services fees. Now, this could be either a one-off or an event-based charge for tools and add-ons that you know, their customers choose. It's recurring, it's diversified, and it's scalable. Now, coming to what their numbers and performance metrics look like in uh, Q1 FY26, their monthly active truckers rose from 6.88 lakh to 7.83 lakhs. That's up 14%. You also have multi-service usage like fuel and tolls that jumped 24%. And the average daily app time hit 43.8 minutes. Gross payments jumped from 5,356 crores to 6,847 crore rupees across 15.88 crore transactions. Revenue from ops grew 56% with a contribution margin of 93% of net revenue. Now, revenue touched 144 crores with core lines like payment and telematics that was up 40%. And super loads, well, that exploded 252%. This is growth with operating discipline. And all this efficiency, it's showing in profitability. Now, operating profit jumped 400% to 40 crore rupees. You had profit after tax, PAT, that jumped 17% to 34 crore rupees. And the net margins, that dipped from 31% to 23% year on year. And the management is saying that the tax line is accounting linked to treasury income with actual outflows later. Now, their core engine is efficient with operating leverage kicking in across scale. Scale beats friction. Now, what are the risks and challenges to Black Buck? Now, the real battle really isn't head-to-head -head competition. It's building both supply and demand in an offline fragmented market. Black Buck Fincer, the NBFC arm, carries credit risks. Now, delays or defaults by borrowers can pressurize profits and their cash flows. Credit risk needs guardrails. The next company we are talking about is Kernix Microsystems. Now, this one is making Indian railways safer and at scale. Now, for years, train safety was a constant worry. And then, you have Kavach, which literally means shield, which is built and tested in India over a decade, and it's now rolling out nationwide. Now, what Kavach does is they use satellites, radio, and trackside tags to monitor movement. Now, if a signal is missed or the speed limits are breached, it auto brakes, it prevents collisions, and it even honks at railway crossings. You miss a signal, the system kicks in. Now, thanks to this, Kernix has a big order book. They have about 2,100 crore rupees. This is about 492% of their FY25 revenues. And a large share of that is coming in from the Chitaranjan Locomotive Works, which is one of India's largest locomotive makers. 
and we are early in this journey. Now, Indian Railway plans to deploy coverage across 85,000 km network by 2030-32 and they're starting off with the high-density corridors like Delhi Howda and Mumbai Chennai that carry nearly half the traffic. Now, Kernex also builds tech for defense, telecom, IoT and turnkey projects with operations here in India, Egypt and the United States. They have 350 engineers and with in-house labs, their current capacity can produce around 450 coverage units at scale. Now, opportunities for Kernex? Well, the railways are being modernized end-to-end. -end. You have Mission Raftar, you've got new freight corridors and One Day Bharat, and all of them are pushing for faster and safer operations, and the coverage is the backbone protection layer. Now, the rollout spans are about 40,000 kilometers in current waves, and Kernex is already executing projects, translating that into multi-year and sticky contracts. Now, beyond that, Signaling is also going digital. You've got over 1,000 stations that are being upgraded and electrification is also accelerating. So Kernex is positioned to ride each of these streams. They've also supplied systems internationally to Egypt and South Africa, which shows, well, global competitiveness. Built in India and built for the world. Now, let's talk about their financials and let's see what that space looks like right now. In Q1 FY26, sales almost doubled from roughly 29 crores to 56 crore rupees on rising demand of coverage and the related safety technologies that come along with it. Now, operating a net profit more than doubled as well with margin expansion playing through here. It's growth plus margin expansion coming along. Now, what are the risks and challenges here though? It's a competitive arena. We've got Meda servo drives, HBL power systems, BHEL, Quadrant Future Tech, and there are a few others in the coverage race as well. Now, the railways may distribute orders across multiple vendors, so Kernex must execute flawlessly to keep winning in the big, large slices. They need to win on execution every single time. From trucks to trains, technology is rewriting how our country moves. India is moving smarter, India is moving faster and safer. And this is really just getting started. You've got players like Blackbuck and Kernex that are laying the rails and roads for a stronger and safer logistics backbone. What are your thoughts? Drop them in the comments below. And thank you for watching this episode of Bottom Line by Grow. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Please read the risk disclosure documents carefully before investing in equity shares, derivatives, mutual fund, and all other instruments traded on the stock exchanges.